Hey everyone, it's me again. Um, I know you've missed me, I've missed you. It seems like it's been forever since we've talked. Um, please remember, kindness matters. Today, we are going to work on some basic beginning division. After years of extensive research, nights staying up, reading all sorts of materials, traveling to the distant lands of the Amazon. I have come up with the conclusion that there are students that I have in my class this year that are uncomfortable with division. And I'm taking it on as my job to make them comfortable with division. So if you are telling yourself right now that I'm not good at division, just lightly smack yourself on the cheek. I'll wait. Good. Thank you for doing that. Um, we're going to go over divisions. It's very easy. Today we're going to do one-digit divisors. Um, I'll do 10, 12. When I put a problem up, stop the video, work it on your paper, start the video, and then watch it to make sure you got it done correctly. So we're just using one-digit divisors today. So if I have 27 divided by 4, First of all, that's what you'd, how you'd say it. 27 divided by 4. Even though it's written like that, 27 divided by 4 is how you're going to pronounce it. Please realize, you cannot, and I mean cannot, do this on a calculator and have the calculator give you the exact right answer. It's not. If there, are, if there is a remainder on a division problem, your calculator's not going to tell you the answer, unless you have one of those fancy calculators that NASA uses to send people to Pluto. They have those fancy calculators, but we don't have them here at school. So, single digit divisors. First of all, we need to know this is the divisor. This is the dividend. And your answer will be the quotient. And of course your remainder will be the remainder, if indeed there is one. If it is a single digit divisor, it is super easy to do these, especially because I let you use your multiplication charts from your journal. So if it were me, and it is as you can see, I'd get my multiplication chart out and I'd go, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28. Oh, 28 is so too big. We want to get as close as we can to 27 without going over 27. So if I look at this, I know the 4 doesn't go into 2. I can't take 2 and split it into groups of 4 not evenly, not with using only whole numbers. Okay, so then I'm not going to have anything above the two. Placement of where you're going to put the numbers in your quotient is very important. Since the four won't go into two, I do not, and I mean do not, want to put a number over the two. If I do, that's telling me that four goes into that two, and it doesn't. Does four go into 27? Well, yes, we've already determined we looked at our four, the multiples of four, multiples of four, four, eight, 12, 16, those are multiples. So we've looked at our multiples of four, and we know that it will go into 27, as close as we can get to 27, is six times. Seven times four gives us 28, too big. We cannot go bigger than what we have here. Then I do six times four is 24. I subtract and I get 3. If I have nothing else to bring down, there's no other numbers here that tells me that this 3 is going to be my remainder. That's an excellent question. Thank you for asking me, the person who's watching this at this point right now. That person that's just asked me that question is, I like good grades and I cannot lie. And so this person wants to know 
how can I check to make sure my division problem, the quotient, is correct? Well, as you know, inverse operation. The inverse of division is multiplication. So we can check division by using multiplication. I'm going to take my quotient multiply it times my divisor add my remainder and that should equal my dividend. That's a lot of really big words and stuff, and they're written in purple, and I don't really understand purple, so, like, could you help me out here, Mr. McMurdo? Sure. Quotient is 6. Times divisor is 4. 6 times 4 is... Subtract 2, count on my toes. Oh, 24. Plus remainder. My remainder was 3. 27. Does that equal 27, which was my dividend? Yes, it does. The beauty of it is, is if there's no remainder, then it should already equal that because you would just add 0 anyway. Let's look at another one. 61. Divided by 9. 9 is my divisor. 61 is my dividend. Single digit divisor. I bust out my multiplication chart. And I, can you see that very well? Maybe we should move that a little bit closer. Yeah. Is that better? Is that better? Okay, good. Bust out my multiplication chart. I look at my 9 row. I slide down that 9 row and I find as close as I can get to 61 without going over. And as close as I can get to 61 without going over is 9, 8, 10, 27, 36, 45, 54, 63. Oh, 63 is too big. 54, so it's times 6. 9 doesn't go into the 6. It goes over the 1. I'm only going to have a 1 digit in my quotient. 9 into 61, 6 times. Then I multiply 6 times 9 is 54. Then I subtract $61, but I give you $54. That means you have... $17 left. That's not right. That means you have $7 left. So with a remainder of 7. My remainder can never be equal to or greater than my divisor. So if my remainder was 9 or greater, then I've done something wrong. So let's, let me show you why. Let me show you why. If I had 61 divided by 9, and I said this was 5, <laughs> 16. 9 remainder, or 5 remainder, 16. I can make a whole other group out of this 16. So if I had 61, and I had 16 left, and I wanted to put them in groups of 9, which is what I'm doing, I have 61 pieces of cake, and I want to put them in groups of 9. That I have enough to make another group of 9. That's why I have a quotient of 6. Then there are 7 left over. Those 7 pieces of cake are mine. Because as you can see, ho, 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 ho. That was my job of the hut impersonation. Boom, shakalaka. Let's go with 4 into 72. 72 divided by 4, step by step, is 4 going to go into 7? Is this number greater than or equal to four, to my divisor? Yes. Since I know it's going to go into 7, I'm going to have a 2-digit quotient. 
it's going to go into the 7. And then whenever I get here and I bring down my 2, it's going to go into that. It is. Trust me on this. Now, I've done a little thinking, and I've figured out that I have a two-digit quotient. So if I don't have a two-digit quotient in this, I've done a mistake. My remainder, if I have a remainder, has to be less than my divisor, which is 4. So I should not have a remainder greater than 4. I may not have a remainder, like anyone can even know that. Look at my multiplication chart. I go down my four call, or row, boom, going across, four, eight, oh, too big. So four times one is four. I subtract, I get a three, and that works, because this is not greater than or equal to my divisor, so that's how I know I'm doing this correctly. I bring down my two. Okay, after I subtract, I'm always going to bring down if I have anything left to bring down. 4 goes into 32. My multiplication chart for 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32. Oh, boom! Shakalaka! 8 times 4 is 32. Subtract, I get a 0. There is nothing else to bring down. Nothing else to bring down. So, I'm good here. I'm good here. And these are just simple ones. We'll move into more difficult ones. I'll probably make a video on Thursday during tutorials, and we'll do some two-digit divisors. But I just wanted to kind of give you a um, reminder on how to do it with one-digit divisors. So, let's go 8 into... 53. Divisor, dividend. Looking for my quotient and if there's a remainder. Does 8 go into 5? No, it does not. I will not. And the rock means will not. Have a number above the 5. Because 8's not going to go into 5. 8 will go into 53. Because 53 is greater than 8. That's how I know it's going to go into to 53. 8 into 53, I look at my multiplication chart, go down my 8s, 8 times 5, 8 times 6, 8 times 6 is what? Good job, Bob, 48. I subtract, and I get 5, 6 remainder 5, because I have nothing else to bring down, so I know that's my remainder, it is less than my divisor, so I'm pretty good. What's that? You want to check it? Are you sure? Okay, we'll check it. Uh, should be 6 times 8 plus 5, and that should equal 53. 6 times 8, as we already determined, is 48. And 48 plus 5 does equal 53. So doing the inverse operation using multiplication, adding the remainder in, shows me that my answer here is correct. I'm going to put two of them up. Pause the video. Have your two-year-old brother come in and do these problems. You do them as, as well. And then when you get them done correctly and your two-year-old brother doesn't, don't stick your tongue out of him because that would be rude. I'm just saying. Let's say 47 divided by 2 and 19 divided by 9. If you're watching this at home, please pause the video now. Solve these two problems when you're finished and also check them with the inverse operation. Um, and when you're finished, unpause the video and check and see how you did. Thank you. 47 divided by 2. Does 2 go into 4? Yes. That means I'm going to have a two-digit quotient. I know it's going to go into 4, so I also have to have something above the 7. 
2 goes into 4, 2 times, 2 times 2 is 4, subtract, I get a 0, I bring down the 7. Does 2 go into 7? Yes, not evenly, but yes it does. 2, 4, 6, 8, boom, I have to have 6, so that's 3. 3 times 2 is 6, subtract, I get 23, remainder 1. Let's look at this next one. And I would take 23 times 2 plus 1, and if I did everything correctly, that would equal 47. I'm not checking it. You check it. The boss of me. I'm the boss of you. All right, 19 divided by 9. 9 does not go into 1. 9 will go into 19 because 19 is greater or equal to 9, but it's actually greater. So I'm going to have a one-digit quotient. A one-digit quotient. 19, or 9 goes into 19. Use my multiplication chart. Look at my 9 row. 9, 8, ooh, 18. That's too big. So I got to do 1. Oh, 18 is not too big. Mr. McMurdo is not paying attention. So 18 is not too big. 18 is just one less. That's going to be 18. Subtract, I get 2, remainder 1. So I'd have 2 times 9 plus 1 should equal 19. Should equal 19. Let's look at one more. And I just want to show you this for a reason. Let's say we have 52 divided by 5. 52 divided by 5. We're going to look at it. Does 5 go into 5? Yes. It will go into 5. That means I'm going to have a number above the 5 and a number above the 2. That means my quotient has to have two digits. Has to have two digits. This is a place where we mess up. Where I mess up, where you mess up, where everybody messes up. Well, except for Mr. W because... Don't tell him, but he's perfect. All right, so does 5 go into 5? Yes, one time. 1 times 5 is 5. I get a 0. I put down a 2. Now, what I see people doing, and they're really not thinking to see if their answer is reasonable, is just making this 1 remainder 2, which makes no sense whatsoever. But... Since I have to have a number above the 2, that's why I do this. It helps me figure out how many digits my answer is going to be. 5 goes into 2 0 times. It will not. So that would be 0. Subtract, I get 2. There's nothing else to bring down. So that tells me my answer is 10, remainder 2. I check it. 5 times 10 plus 2 should equal 52. 5 times 10 is 50, plus 2 equals 52. Boom. Shakalaka. Questions? No. Excellent. You have a homework assignment. Do something kind for someone else. Cleaning your room is not doing something kind for somebody else. That's doing what you should do. Not picking on my sister is not be doing something kind for somebody, somebody else. That's something you should do. Be kind. Kindness matters. Do something kind just because. Love y'all. Peace out. Boom shakalaka.